Hello readers, remember our learning target this week is I can identify if the text is fiction and nonfiction. And readers, we do this by asking and thinking about what is the text really about? What is the title and the cover and the book blurb on the back? What does it give you or show you? What type of writing is it? A couple other things we pay attention to is what is the author's purpose of that text we're reading? How is it structured? And lastly, what different characteristics does the text have? Because all of these characteristics help for us to decide our purpose and what we're needing and wanting to read. So, as a reminder, remember fiction, it, we read it because the purpose is to entertain. It contains dialogue, which means conversation and make-believe characters. It can be fantasy, fantasy, historical, or realistic. Or there's nonfiction. And remember in yesterday's lesson, non is a prefix for not. So it actually says not fiction, meaning its purpose is to inform or to teach. So it is information that is real or true, it can give directions, the news, facts, or it could be about someone's life story. And yesterday, I modeled these different characteristics. We talked about that there's two groups that our books could fall into. Our books could either be fiction or they could be nonfiction. And so some of those characteristics, fiction, means they're not real. However, remember, there are lots of stories that carry in our full realistic stories. And realistic fiction is still a type of fiction. Fiction also means that we read for entertainment. It has illustrations and drawings. It has story elements as its main structure, and it has to be read in sequential order. So what I hear is that fiction tells a story, and we have to read that story in order. Well, let's remind ourselves of nonfiction characteristics, which means it's real and factual. So when we think about real, we think about the real world. Not necessarily realistic, because nonfiction informational text is factual. It's 100% true. And no matter what resource we use or read, those facts would remain true with no matter which book we were to read. The purpose of nonfiction is for us to learn. And that's what that word over here in form means. The structure are text features like photos, charts, diagrams, and the glossary at the back. Then these text structures are different than the story elements. And the nice thing with nonfiction is we can sometimes read it out of order. And I like that that says sometimes. Because a lot of informational nonfiction text, we could read it out of order. But if it's factual information telling a story, we know that when we read books that tell a story. We do have to read those in order for that to make sense. All right, so let's do a review. Let's practice. So let's see So let's look here. Let's decide which of these books is fiction and nonfiction and why. So if I look at the book, Who is Kobe Bryant? And I see that is is changed to was. So who was Kobe Bryant? I know that this is a person that was in the real world. And it's telling his story. Which then we call that a biography. Because somebody's writing about Kobe Bryant's life. So that would be factual information 
And throughout the book, too, it talks about dates like 1963, the year 2010. All those dates are also another great example of nonfiction text. Let's look at the next book. So let's label that non-fiction because it's 100% true. It is factual about Kobe Bryant's life. Ooh, I see something really important at the top of the next book. It says National Geographic Kids. And why that's so important is National Geographic is known for their informational text. And I see right on the front another real world something. I see it says alien ocean animals. So it's information that we is going to teach us and we're going to learn about these ocean animals. And I know that National Geographic focuses on informational text. And this is a photo. So just by the title, the cover, and the writer, I see clues that's telling me that this is a non, oops, let's rewrite that. That was pretty messy. A non-fiction text. Now let's think of Winn-Dixie. Okay, we think about Winn-Dixie. And there's, I know something that is not in there. There's nothing fantasy make-believe. So that is like a no. However, everything in, in Winn-Dixie is realistic. Which means it is real life. Everything could happen. There's no magic. There's no talking animals. So it is 100% realistic without fantasy. We do have to read it in order. It does have the structure of story elements. There are, and we read this to be entertained. So all those are examples of fiction. Another important piece to remember about fiction is I see even here on the front cover, one of those story elements are the settings where your story takes place and every setting and become become because of Winn Dixie, all the settings real are real places that exist. So this is a great example of fiction. But we would say this one is realistic fiction because there's nothing magical. Nothing unrealistic in this story. The last title we have is My Big Fat Zombie Goldfish. And I know as you listen to this story, you know that there are talking animals, that there are animals are given powers. They can do things that humans can do that would not exist in a realistic world. So we call that kind, that kind of fiction, fantasy. But it is still a type of fiction. So readers, we have one example of nonfiction, which was about a real person's life. Then we have nonfiction, where we're learning about alien ocean animals, and all of the text evidence. I have evidence from the text that supports why it's nonfiction. Same with Because of Winn Dixie and my big fat zombie goldfish. So we know that we have to use our comparing skills. We have to compare and contrast one book to another. But what we're comparing and contrasting are the characteristics 
So the one thing you want to be able to do as a reader is make sense to use text evidence in your books to make sense of why books are fiction and nonfiction. We want to get this out of our habits. We don't want to say, oh, I think or I thought. We want to get guessing out of there. We want to help you be super comfortable with your comparison skills. And the best way to compare stories to figure out if they're fiction or nonfiction is to look at their characteristics, just like we did here with these four books. So let's look at the next two. I'm going to have you hit pause and with your class, which with your teacher and turn and talks, use the characteristics for fiction and nonfiction. And I'd like you to figure out which one of these books is fiction, which one of these books is nonfiction. So which is which? But I don't want you just to say which is fiction, which is nonfiction. I want you to tell us why. Tell your partner. Talk about it as a class. If you choose one is fiction, what is the text evidence? What's your reasoning? And look super close on the covers. Because there is one book here, readers, we have not read yet on our Book of the Days, but we will be. And you don't have to have read it yet. Use the text evidence on the front of the book. Use your schema to, and use the characteristics of fiction and nonfiction, and then discuss it as a class. Lastly, I would like your class to also stop and pause and discuss the same thing. Because this time in your books, there are three books. This time I want you to find out which of these books not only is fiction, let me try that again. One of these books is fiction, one of these books is both fiction and nonfiction because nonfiction has fiction in it, right? So there's characteristics of both. And three, there's one that is very clearly nonfiction. And when I say both, as a class, you're going to discuss, is there one is that book that is both, is it more fiction or is it more nonfiction? Then together with your partner, you are going to do what we just did as a class. Together as partners, decide which one of these three is fiction. Which one of these three is both. It has strong fiction and nonfiction characteristics. And which one is very clearly nonfiction? Use the characteristics. Be ready to say why you think that. Where's your proof? What is your evidence? What is your characteristics? Good luck, readers. Now, lastly, readers, you will have your own activity to do. Your teacher did some. We worked together as a class with partners. And now you are going to do some comparing and contrasting on a separate activity on the next slide. Happy reading.